Hello everyone and welcome to chapter 37 of this Flutter course. As you've seen in the previous chapters, we've started to move away from our local database storage and that was on SQLite. And we started going more and more towards using Firestore databases that are hosted by Firebase. So that was a very exciting point in our um, in this course basically and for me as well as the as your instructor to go over to a cloud storage rather than using local uh, storage and you see we used crud and uh, as i mentioned in the previous chapter i really wanted to introduce you to crud because it's such an important part of software development that you will sooner or later need to use crud storage locally on your computer uh, on your application so um that was basically done uh, on purpose. So we first talk about local storage and then we move away from it. <clears throat> and simply because uh, even Firebase in itself is some sort of a CRUD storage. Not some sort of, it is CRUD, but it is stored on the cloud. And concepts of CRUD would have been a lot more difficult for me to explain to you had we not first implemented, implemented them uh, locally. So um, in the previous chapter, we prepared our... Uh, service which we i will bring the code here so we can have a look we we actually called it let's see it's inside our services cloud we call it firebase cloud storage right here and um we also talked about how we can basically start integrating in uh, uh, this firebase cloud storage in our application and this is the chapter that we're gonna um make those plans uh, concrete okay if you follow the chapters uh, from the beginning chronologically in this course, you'll know that what I like to do when I try to refactor things is to cut things from the source. And by that, I mean, now we want to get rid of our uh, local CRUD storage. And what I like to do as a strategy is to go to uh, the application and like either comment out that entire piece of code, which has to do with our node service and the CRUD exceptions, or uh, either we cut it out completely or we comment it out, okay? So let's go ahead and deal with that now. So I'm going to change the screen layout a little bit here. And I'm then going to go into our notes service. So please go to the notes service and select the entire code in here and comment it out. So that's for notes service. And then we're also going to go to our, I'm going to save this file. And then we're going to go to CRUD exceptions, select the entire content and comment it out, please. So that's that. Um, Another thing that we need to take care of is um, inside our new Firebase cloud storage, inside uh, get notes, what we forgot to do, is, or I actually didn't forget to do, I intentionally left it like this so that we could get the basic idea, is as you can see here, we, we are inside this uh, get notes function as the caption indicates at the bottom of the screen. We are returning an instance of our cloud note use, using its constructor its default constructor. However, if, if you remember from this cloud node snapshot, we have a convenient constructor that can create an instance of our cloud node using a document snapshot. And that's exactly what we're getting in here. You see query document snapshot, but we're not using that convenient constructor. And that's exactly what we're going to fix uh, right now. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Let's go in here where we have the doc and I'm gonna change this code to go from a normal function to an arrow function. And then in here, I'm gonna say we return a cloud note from snapshot of that doc. Okay, just like that. I press S to save this file, command S, sorry. And you can also remove that comma at the end. So you either leave it like this with a comma at the end so it becomes multi-line or you remove the comma like I do in here, and it just becomes one line, all right? OK, that part is done. Now, what we need to do um, is to be inside this uh, Firebase cloud storage. And you can see in here, inside the functionality, uh, sorry, inside the create new node at the moment, we're saying void. So we're not returning the uh, node that we're actually creating. And we need to fix this. So uh, we need to actually create the new, new node and return it. So let's go in here and I'm just going to say final, make the code a little bit bigger. Final document is equal to await on this. And if you look at your document now, 
you can see it is a document. Actually, you may not be able to see it now. You can see it probably. It is a document reference. Okay, so it's a reference, as its name indicates, is not the snapshot. In order to get the snapshot, we need to uh, just issue the get function on it. So let's just say final fetched note is await on this document get. And you'll see now fetched note is the actual snapshot that will contain the data of that document. All right. So in here, we will just return a cloud note uh, like this. Or let's see, cloud note with these parameters. The document ID is going to be the fetched note ID. The owner user, user ID is provided to our function already. And the text is just going to be empty like this. And also make sure that uh, in here we don't return void, except we return a future of cloud notes. OK? So save your file after that. And this part's also done. OK. Um, now we need to make sure just, I'm just going to close uh, all these tabs. And as the caption indicates, we're going to go to our create update notes view and fix that up so it can talk with our new service, which is the cloud Firebase storage. I think we call it Firebase cloud storage. Sorry about that. So I'm going to press command P in Visual Studio Code on Mac or control P in uh, Linux and Windows, and then just say uh, create, what's it called? Uh, create update note view, OK? In here, as the caption indicates, we need to import three things. Our cloud node Dart file, the cloud storage exceptions Dart file, and the Firebase cloud storage Dart, Dart file. So those are at the moment inside the, um, let's see, they're inside services cloud folder. So I'm going to go in here. I'm just going to say import package my notes and then services cloud. So we have first cloud notes. So let's import that. I'm going to copy this path and then use it again to import cloud storage exceptions like that. And then we also need cloud, what's it called? Uh, Firebase cloud storage like that. So that's uh, you will need to also do these three imports. If you haven't called your application My Notes, then this package uh, is going to be different. It's going to be package the name of your application and then services, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. OK? OK. Um, the next thing that we have to do, as you can see in the captions here, we need to make sure that our create update note views state, which is right here, which at the moment contains our node service as its node service, it has to move towards using the Firebase cloud storage. So I'm going to go to my notes as well in here just to make sure I'm giving you all the information that you need. So let's change our node service in here and call it now Firebase cloud storage. And that's the service, OK? And in your init function then, we need to also make sure that we get the uh, singleton instance of our Firebase cloud storage in the init state function. All right. Also remember, this note now is not a database note anymore, but it's actually a, a cloud note. So let's call that cloud note as well. All right. And, and now we can see we have an unused import in here. So I'm just going to remove that since we don't need that unused import. Then the next thing we need to do is, as the caption indicates, we have to go to create or get existing node. And we have to make sure that it works with the cloud storage. So let's go in here. Perfect. So in here, uh, we're not going to return a database node anymore. And we're going to say it returns a cloud node. And here, we expect a parameter of type cloud nodes, optionally, that can be passed to our uh, route. And here, we're not going to be working with you see here, we were working with database users before because our application was actually creating new users in the local database and associating notes with those users. Thankfully, now, now that we're going to, uh, now that we're using Firestore um, database, we don't have to play with users anymore because remember, users are already managed by Firebase. So what we can do is just remove that owner completely. And now we await on our node service, and we just say create new node, and then we need 
an owner user ID. And remember, this owner user ID is going to be the actual current user's user ID. So let's just say final user ID is current user dot ID. Okay. And then in here, we just say user ID. Okay. And we're storing that note in here as we were doing before. So we didn't change that code at all. And then we're seeing new notes also need to be returned. So now we need to fix the creation of our new note, and that's something that we've already done. So that, that shouldn't be a separate point really in the caption. So we've already done that, nothing to take care of right now. We also need to take care of now our deleting a note. You remember when we go out, out of the note creation view, if the note's text was empty, we actually delete that note from the database, okay, right now. And now we need to go towards our note service and also delete it, but using the new function, which is called delete note. And let's see what it takes as a parameter. It takes a document ID, and that's our notes document ID, okay? So that's for delete note. Um, now we have another function, very useful function that saves the note. And when we go to, out of the screen, if the, if that note, um, if the text for that note is not empty. Very similar to delete note, but it kind of does the opposite. Make sure that the note is present and also that the text to the text editing controller is set. If it's not, uh, not empty, meaning that the text is set, then we update the current note. So let's then await on it. And in here, we just say update note, those new parameters. The document ID is gonna be our notes document ID. And the text in here, let's see, Oh, we have to just put a comma in there and then we're good to go. So that's updating the save note if text not empty function. Okay, now we need to go to our note list view and I'm gonna do the same thing in my notes. <clears throat> Excuse me. And let's go ahead and do that. Uh, do we have any errors in here? Yes, I can see I'm getting an error for update note, and I don't really know what the problem actually is. Let's see. Document ID is required. Okay. And I can see that this is something also we need to update. So let's go to your text controller listener function as well and update the note there as well. You can see it's doing this. So we now, we now have to say update note. And we have a note document ID and then with that text. So please ensure that you're, you've taken care of the text controller listeners functionality as well. Um, <clears throat> and I'm just making sure that that's exactly what we've done in uh, my notes as well. All right. So that, that was one step back. Um, now let's go and do what the caption at the bottom screen says. Let's go to our notes list view. Um, notes list view. And as you can see at the moment, we're working with a list of database notes. And we don't want to do this anymore. We actually want to work with iterables because that's like the default way that Firebase actually works. It works with iterables. It doesn't work with lists. So, and iterables are actually better because they're like lazy lists. So let's change this to an iterable of a cloud note like this. And also we change our note callback to be a cloud note. I can spell. And also we have to auto import this. So I'm just going to import cloud note. So that error is going to go away. I'm going to remove this uh, import statement from there. Now, when you're using iterables, you can't do a subscript like we're doing in here. You have to say object element at, and then you have your index. And that's pretty much what we're doing in here. So now if you've made this change in your node callback, you made this change from list to iterable, and you change this from database node to cloud node, and also change this function from a subscript to element at, then you shouldn't have any errors in your notes list view .dart file either. Now, we're going to go to a little bit juicier changes that we have to make to ensure that our application works as expected with the cloud uh, storage. Let's go to notes view. Um, notes view like here and you'll see now um actually i can see my notes here uh we have to do a few updates in here because we, we're not going to work with note service anymore since it doesn't exist but one bigger change that we have to make 
is, as you can see in the caption offset, remove the future builder. Why is that? Here is the future builder the way it is today. You can see the future builder's actual future is to get or create a user. But do we really need that anymore? And the answer is obviously no, because previously we were using this future builder to create a user in our database so that we can associate notes with that user. However, since now we're going towards Firestore and uh, uh, cloud storage, the users, like users in your application, are managed by Firebase uh, itself. So you don't have to create them in that sense. When a user has logged in and landed on the main interface of your application, that Firebase user already exists. So you don't have to do anything. So we need to remove this future builder. So I'm just going to press command dot on it. And um, sometimes Visual Studio Code can actually help with that to remove it, but it's not helping at the moment. So what I'm going to do in this case, as you can see, I'm going to just grab this stream builder in here just grab the stream builder without the return statement, okay? And find the end of that stream builder. Visual Studio Code is helping me very nicely with this line in here and saying this is the end of stream builder. So I'm literally just going to do that and cut it, okay? So now what you should be ending up with is your future builder, like that looks like this. And then I'm going to basically kill that future builder like this, okay? So then paste your stream builder. The, in the place that your future builder was before. So now your body, the body of your, um, uh, of your scaffold should just be the stream builder. Okay, so basically we just got rid of the future builder. All right? So that was that. What we need to do then is to make sure also in here that we're not using that, that we're not exposing a user email. You see, from now on, when we create uh, notes, read notes, etc., we're going to use a user ID, the user's identifier. So we're not going to work with our um, with the email. So I'm also going to go to my notes. Sorry about that. So. Um, as the caption at the bottom of the screen indicates, let's go and change this to user ID. And we're just going to go auth service Firebase current user, and then we're going to get the ID. OK, so that's our user ID. And the rest now is kind of history. We need to ensure that this uh, view now works with our uh, new node service. So let's remove this import from here. And now let's say this node service, it is a Firebase cloud storage. So we're going to say Firebase cloud storage. And in here, we just add that and initialize that. We say Firebase cloud storage, which is, a, if you remember correctly, um, it is now a singleton. So we're not creating new instances, basically, by doing this, although it looks like we're doing that. So inside our stream builder, now what we're going to do is not going to say all notes anymore like that. We're going to say all notes, but we're going to pass the owner user ID. And that owner user ID, remember, we're storing it as a getter call user ID. And for all our notes in here, remember, this all notes is going to give us an iterable if I move my mouse over there, you can see it's an iterable of cloud notes. So it's not a list anymore. So let's say iterable. And is a cloud note in here. OK. And I can, I can see it's complaining that cloud note can't be found. So I'm going to import cloud note like that. Upon deleting in here, we also need to make sure that we call the new one that says delete note. And in this case, we just say notes.documentid. All right. So. So that is that seems to be working fine. But what we got here is a subtype of type Firebase cloud storage notes service. And we're getting that in, where are we getting that error? Let's see if we can find that. In here, notes two. And that's OK. And that's because we probably do have to do a hot restart. And doing a hot restart could kill my SCRCPY. And I can see that it did that. But that's fine too. I'm going to bring up SCRCPY like this. and um, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to run the application now from scratch. And this is simply because, I mean, this is a state management in your application because we had a node service from before, and we do a hot, re hot reload. But hot reload all of a sudden says, oops, this node service that used to be a node service is not node service anymore. It's a Firebase cloud storage. So what should I do with it? So it's just, it's like 
state residue that is kind of like staying in your application and you can't clean it until you do a hot restart. And when I did a hot restart, I have a problem with SCRCPY. So I can't, I can't do anything about that problem, but let's just run the application from scratch and just make sure everything is working as expected. All right, now I can see that I've logged into the application and I have no notes, all right? Let me bring up the caption for the next uh, topic to talk about. So what we need now, you can see notes have disappeared and this is a good sign because that kind of means that we have moved away from our CRUD storage and now we're not reading those notes that were in the CRUD storage anymore. <clears throat> So let's go and create some notes. So I want to press the plus button in here and I'm just going to say note number one. So if I press the back button in here, I can see that note number one is appearing here. And let's go create another one and let's say note number two. Great, note number one and number two. Now if I press this number two and then change it to note number three, you can see that those changes are immediately taking effect, okay? So let me log out from this user and let's log in with, uh, I don't know really which user I was logged in with before. I'll log in with this user. I can see that user has no notes. So I'm just gonna say Vandot's first note, go out and then say Vandot's uh, second note and go out. So now if I log out from this Vandot user in here and if I say that I wanna log in with another user, so like this, I can see my note one and three are displayed here. So I can just say note number one and two. And if I log out from this user and log in again with Vandot, I should be able to see Vandot's uh, uh, notes through Barbas. Great. So that seems to be working. Now, what we could do, I mean, if you're just like me and you're curious how this data is actually stored in Firebase, we could do that. So let me open up a window in here and say console. And let's go ahead into our project on uh, Firebase console. And let's go in uh, our database. And let's have a look in here. As you can see, there are four documents, two documents per person, per user. And you can see these two have the same user ID. And that's the, that's the Vanlod user. You can see it, it starts with A and C. And the other two nodes, they have another user ID, which is for Pixolid TAB. Remember this A and C user? What we can do now is actually go in here to the authentication section and have a look at this Vanlab user. And you can see the user ID is A and C. And the other user actually has ERD. So if we go back to Firestore and look at the two last uh, notes created by Pixolid, you can see that their user ID is ERDD, you can see here. All right. So very well done, congratulations. In two chapters, we've been able to go away from local uh, CRUD storage to Firebase, huge feat, so well done. What we need to do now is, as we usually do in other chapters, is we're gonna commit our work and also tag it. So I'm gonna do some reshuffling on the screen here and grab Visual Studio Code here make the size a little bit bigger, kind of ginormous, but that's okay. And let's have a look at our log and we can see the last step was step 19. Let's do a git status and there were a lot of files modified, nothing new. So I'm just gonna say git at all, git commit, <clears throat> step 20 and push this. Let's have a look at our logs. We have step 19 and step 20 now. And if you look at our tags, we have up to step 19 up to and including step 19. So let's tag this as step 20 and then push our tags. All right, that's great. As is tradition again, at the end of every chapter, I talk about what we have to discuss in the chapter that follows. And um, we've talked quite a lot about now uh, allowing the user to store their own notes in the application, but it would be a lot more fun if we allowed the user to also share those notes with somebody that they know about, uh, so somebody that they know, like a friend or a family member. So that's what we're going to talk about in the next chapter, sharing notes. So I'll see you there.